Praise the Lord, folks. It is just wonderful to be able to do a video message and reach out to you. Many of you maybe know me. My name is Lee McClelland. I am the pastor of the Ark Church in Belfast. And it has just been uh, an incredible ride, if, if that's the right term, or incredible last number of weeks as God has brought me and my wife and my family on an incredible journey. And how we have just come to know the goodness of God, the grace of God and the mercy of God. And as many as you've known maybe our story, maybe you've seen it already, how God sent a cleaner to reach me uh, in a hospital critical care unit uh, when I was uh, in, in there with COVID-19. And I just want to share a few minutes of, of this story and a few minutes of encouraging your heart. Because here's what I've come to learn as a Christian. We're not adverse to trials. Trials are coming our way. The Bible talks about it raining on the just and the unjust. And so I'm not adverse and Christians aren't adverse to trouble and trial. And so out of that experience that I've had, I can honestly tell you that God is still good. That God is glorious. That Christ is incredible. And what I have learned is, is the great love of Jesus Christ. It, it, COVID-19 will never stop the love of God. Sin will never stop the love of God. Sickness will never stop the love of God. But for, for me, who a number of weeks ago when I took ill, I never at once ever thought, folks, that I would be fighting for my life. I never thought for once that I would be struggling. And I've been contemplating that I may never see my wife or kids again in this life. So when I was finally admitted or rushed to the hospital, on a, it was a Thursday night, when I was rushed to the hospital and, and went in and, uh, and the doctors and nurses began working on me, which were just an incredible job. But when they began working on me, folks, never once did I think I would be fighting for life in there. In fact, I actually thought that, that I'm going to go here tonight. They're going to give me some medication. They're going to help me over the next day or so and, I, and I'm going home. And so... The night that I went in and they began, they took a chest x-ray, sorry, and as they took their chest x-ray, they came to me pretty quickly and says, Lee, it looks like you've COVID-19 and you're in bad shape and we're concerned and we're going to keep you and we're going to take you to the critical care unit and isolation ward. And folks, the, the going there that night was, was unbelievably eerie. As you're going through corridors that are empty, you're masked up, you have a gown put around you, the nurse has a gown put around her and her face and shields. And as they're escorting you to this place through the hospital where there's nobody else, and even when you get to the wards, you, you didn't see very many people. And then you come to this room and where they put you in this room and they basically say to you, there's your bathroom, there's your bed, and, and there's a TV if you want to watch it. And they close the door with these words, don't ever come out of here. Stay in here. Don't come out under any circumstances. If you need us, buzz us. And it's those words that still actually haunt me to some degree because that was the night that I realized how serious this was and how serious it was for me. And folks, I'd love to be able to tell you how, how glorious it was, but the truth of it is, is day turned into day and my body was ravishly being eaten away or, or, or drained by COVID-19 is my temperature was uncontrollable for a period. As my body was in agony and my lungs were fighting for, for, for breath, sorry. I just came to this point where I began to contemplate that I might not get out of COVID-19. I come to this place where I realized COVID-19 might take my life. And as you begin to contemplate those emotions and as you begin to think about what you might miss in life if you begin to think about your wife and your family and your kids and you begin to think about the things and the milestones that you might miss out on. It's in those moments when you begin to prepare and put your mind and set upon Christ and death and life. Well, I was beginning now to prepare to die. 
because I knew that unless something miraculous might begin to turn around and I thank God for all the medical intervention. But you've got to understand, folks, I was at a place where even the doctors and nurses were coming in and none of them ever had a good report. The medication day after day, the oxygen, nothing, nothing seemed to be working. And then I took double pneumonia and there was just this moment in time when you do have to face the reality that you might not make it. And you have to come to that reality. You can't bury your head in the sand. You have to face the possibility that you might not make it. As I came to that place, the most incredible moments in my life were also the most darkest moments in my life. Because in those moments of time, and that's what they were, moments of time, when I was preparing in my heart to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, that he was actually ministering to me through the Word of God and the Spirit of God, that out of Galatians chapter 4, that I am no longer a slave, but I am a son and therefore a jointer with Christ. And all oh, folks, listen, the joy that there was that God is actually reinforcing my heart and reminding me and assuring me that I am a son of God. And so it made and took away the sting of death. But yet, there was also still that natural moment of time when I'm saying, Oh God, help me. Strengthen me. I'm still here. I'm still in this bed fighting for life. I have still a wee family that is in home, hoping that I'm praying that I come back. And, and folks, the only way I can put this is, is I just cried out to the Lord. Lord, just help me and encourage me, whatever that may be. And if you take me, you take me, and if I live, I live. And folks, all I can say is this, and many of you have maybe heard this story already, is when God sent the cleaner. When the cleaner came in that one of those mornings and cleaned my room, and how God had witnessed in my heart that he was a Christian, and how he began to share his life, and how he began to share his ministry, and how God had used his ministry. Oh, folks, listen, it encouraged my heart. I felt God do something in me. I felt faith rise up as I listened how God had used this man in such a way, a man whom we have never heard of, I had never heard of, but yet God knew him, and God sent him, and God used his life to encourage my heart. And as I lay on that bed, I was so encouraged. And then when he says, kind of pray for you, and I seen him on the the brush and the mask and the, 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 the apron on all. Oh, and he, how he prayed to, for God to touch my mind and my heart. It was incredible. And how he came back. And again, I don't want to labor on how he came back the next day with the, the crisps and the coke and, and how God had done something in me the night before and, and, and answered a cry from my heart. And oh, folks, it's, it's just incredible what God can do in the midst of pain and sorrow. And how God can still reaffirm to you that he loves you. And, and, and how can he encourage you. And so I would say to you out there today, listen, some of you are going through hell. Some of you don't know whether you're going to live or die. Some of you are going through uh, treatment, family problems, divorce, breakup, marital, whatever, whatever. Some of you are going through your night of darkness. Some of you are going through the hell with COVID-19. And all I can say to you is this, cling to Christ. Trust in Christ. Trust in his word. Trust that God can meet your need. Trust that whether it's life or death, because, because that's sometimes where we're at, whatever it may be, that still Jesus Christ is your everything. And if you're not saved and you don't know Christ, I said it before, cry out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Cry on to him. Ask forgiveness of sins. Go away home justified. Sleep in peace tonight. Whatever you've done, whatever sins you've committed, get them under the blood of Jesus. And ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. So listen, folks. I'm going to finish with this. Christ is glorious. And Jesus Christ is still in the business of changing lives. And he can change your life wherever you are listening to this right now. Hello from Philippines. I am Almir Lad. I was really amazed and blessed about the powerful testimony of Pastor Lee. It was really a wonderful testimony to God's loving care for his people. And yes, he loves us more than we can ever know. And I want to share this verse to all of you it says in isaiah 53 5 
But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. It is true that he is our divine doctor and he is our great healer. And I want to share this song to all of you. It talks about the goodness and faithfulness of God, that His mercy never fails us, His grace never fails us, and His goodness is running after us. So let's sing together and worship the Lord. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never failed me, and all my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been Of the goodness of God. 